in this. Is there any plans to make this playable on PC, or is this strictly mobile forever? Uh, are there any? Uh, yeah, this, this the current plan is to be on mobile, both uh, Android and iOS. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do uh, PC. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone, right? found out the answer to that question was a resounding yes. But what's up, gamers? I hope you guys are all having a great day today, just full of so much positivity and happiness, dude. <laughs> Because today we're going to be talking about one of my personal favorite things in this entire world, and that is none other than mobile games. Yeah! And hopefully everybody picked up on that extremely heavy layer of sarcasm right there, because I already know someone's going to try to take that seriously. But today we are going to be talking about none other than the hottest new video game release of the summer, and that is none other than Diablo Immortal. And like you would expect with any Chinese developed mobile game releasing in the year 2022, the game is absolutely packed full of microtransactions and pay to win mechanics, surprising absolutely no one. This is par for the course when it comes to free to play mobile games, especially when they're from a Chinese developer. This is nothing new. I don't really know what else people were expecting, but that aside from a mechanical standpoint, a story standpoint, I've heard like Diablo Immortal is actually a pretty solid game. It's just the micro transactions kind of ruin the experience, which is literally the age-old tale of any mobile game at this point. The game may be solid, but the companies that make them, because they're free to play, want to make as much money as humanly possible off of those games, so how do they do it? They make you pay for literally fucking everything, or else you're going to just be grinding the game for literally more hours than you could ever possibly live in one lifetime. But that is the standard mobile game business model. It's kind of what you would expect from a game like Diablo Immortal, especially considering the fact that it's one, developed by a Chinese developer, NetEase, and on top of that, it is free to play. Now, like a normal person, when I heard about this game, you know, I kind of criticized it when it came out because they chose to make it the big announcement for their BlizzCon event, which in case you guys don't know, you literally have to spend money to watch this BlizzCon livestream. I think it's like 50 or 60 bucks. Like, it's not cheap to watch this dumbass conference. And the big announcement they were teasing was literally a Chinese-made mobile game. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do uh, PC. Do, do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone. Right? And it was one of the biggest fuck you to fans they could have possibly done. So myself and a lot of other people at the time were calling out Blizzard for that decision. But that's about as far as I took it, man. You know, I criticized the decision for them to show it off at their event instead of just like dropping a YouTube trailer or something like that. Like, that's about it. You know, despite the fact that I don't personally enjoy mobile games, it definitely has a right to exist. And mobile gaming does have a big place in the video game market that a lot of people enjoy. I mean, shit, man. Around 50% of all gaming revenue comes from mobile gaming, and it's only getting bigger and bigger in terms of a market share per year, so it's not going anywhere, it definitely has a purpose, and for the people out there saying that games like Diablo Immortal are ruining the video game industry, you know, video games will never be the same, mobile will destroy gaming as we know it, like, that shit would have already happened a very long time ago at this rate, but going back to Diablo Immortal, with all the negativity surrounding the game, all the YouTubers making videos, calling it out, exposing it, you name it, bro. Like, literally everybody and their mother is talking shit about this game at this point. You would think the game would be an absolute failure. Well, if so, you would be completely wrong because the game is literally making over $1.5 million on average per day in pure profit for Blizzard after they pay platform fees to Google and Apple. So, the game is a massive success. They're making a ton of money from it, and basically all the r slash gaming rage tards are up in their fucking feelings on YouTube right now. I'm I'm so mad right now. I'm so mad because I feel like in some way I tacitly, my money went to this. This stupid t-shirt that I bought is f***ing part of this f Excuse my cussing. But on the topic of Diablo Immortal actually becoming a financial success, I wanted to watch this video from Review Tech USA because I think it highlights the situation pretty well and kind of gives me a good basis to talk about this entire thing. So let's go ahead and play that shit. 
So we know Diablo Immortal is a complete disaster. It is a pay to win game and many, many people are angry that Diablo Immortal exists. Yeah, that's something I will never understand is people who get unironically upset that a video game even exists, bro. Like, do you really have that little going on in your life that you're unironically fuming over the fact that a video game you don't even have to play simply exists? Like, bro, I just couldn't even imagine. But is it a financial failure? Nope. It's actually doing pretty well. So you know what that means. We could cry all we want to. Games like this are going to continue to be made. Yeah, and that's the crazy thing, too, is like people are acting like Diablo Immortal is such a unique case. Like there's been hundreds, if not thousands of games released on the phone every single year that are just as bad, if not worse, than Diablo Immortal in terms of monetization. This is nothing new for mobile gaming. Like it's a free to play mobile game. I really just don't know what people were expecting in this situation, especially from a Chinese mobile game, bro. The sole purpose for those things even existing is to separate you from your money. Let's get into it. Skip it up and that up. So here is the thing that's very sad about Diablo Immortal is that I hear it's a very good Diablo game. Yeah, I've actually heard the same thing, but in all honesty, man, if you want to play a Diablo style game that's free to play, just get Lost Ark, bro. That shit's so much better. If you got rid of all the pay to win crap and and how they're basically pushing you into a corner or painting you into a corner to spend money continuously on Diablo Immortal. There's actually a really good Diablo game there. Shit, man, I guess credit where credit's due. The Chinese developers didn't completely fuck it up. At least that's something. You know, good job, netties. But here's the problem. It, it is riddled with microtransactions. And if you want to fully max out your character in Diablo Immortal, it's approximately 110 thousand dollars to do so bro those are rookie numbers for our boy dsp over here um sadly even i've even i've been had dude it happens to me too like i'm not even gonna lie this last year when sadly you know i ended up being single again dude i played a shitload of mobile games at night like no lie like more than ever before i played a shitload of mobile games to the point where i was like this is getting out of hand and one hundred and ten thousand dollars well, you would think with all this bad news that the game would perform terribly, right? There's many people that are angry at Diablo Immortal, right? No. It's doing very well and has made a crap ton of money for Activision Blizzard already. Yeah, I mean, that's not surprising at all. A lot of people really have this misillusioned idea that controversy on YouTube or Reddit or Twitter equates to like real world impact, when in reality it doesn't. This stuff never reaches the casual market. The mobile market is about as casual as you can get, and chances are they're probably not going to curl up in bed every night with a fucking Yong Ya yeah video playing on their phone. Like, I would fucking hope not. But it's just really this weird idea that I've seen so much recently where people who watch like Yong Ya, yeah, for example, or any other like loot box or company bad channels, they think like they actually have an impact on shit. You really don't. None of this shit ever hits the mainstream. It's a very niche segment of the video game industry. And we see it time and time again where the games they shit on the most are the ones that usually sell the best for that entire year. Like just for an example, bro, a universally shit on and hated game like Battlefield 2042 that literally everyone, including myself, made videos on saying how bad it was. That game was still in the top selling games for 2021 last year. Like, we really do not matter. And it's just really funny that people act like because their favorite YouTuber makes a video talking about how bad a game is, suddenly that game's gonna completely flop. This comes from mobilegamer.biz. I'll read it to you, then we'll discuss. Diablo Immortal's first month of release has earned Blizzard $49 million from 10 million downloads. You know, as our boys in the UK would say, just some quick maths for you guys. That's about $5 per person playing the game and about $1.6 million a day. And this game hasn't even launched in China yet, which is probably gonna be the biggest market for it. According to App Magic figures, the data collated by MobileGamer.biz suggests that the mobile edition is likely the Diablo series' biggest ever launch. Oh no. 
According to Blizzard, Diablo 3 sold 3.5 million in its first day and 6.3 million in its first week back in 2012. But a later financial report suggested that the game didn't hit 10 million sales until June 30th, six weeks after launch. Yeah, this is kind of a dumb statistic because Diablo Immortal is free, so you're not having to go out and spend 50, 60 bucks on it. So I don't really know why this is even being brought up. I mean, I guess like technically it's amounted the most players of any Diablo game in the shortest amount of time, but those players aren't always translating into actual money for Blizzard, so technically Diablo 3 made them a fuck ton more money in the same time period. But chances are Diablo Immortal long term is going to do much better. It should be taken into account that Immortal is free to play, of course, so the barrier to entry is, well, free. I think the better way to put that is the barrier to entry is literally non-existent. In the beginning, App Magic's figures cover developer earnings, so do not include the 30% Apple and Google tax either, so total overall revenue will be higher than 49 million heading Blizzard's way. On revenue, the data suggests the game peaked 10 days after launch, with Blizzard earning 2.4 million on June 11th, and for the first week on sale, total revenue was 11.9 million, and at day 30, it totaled 49 million, or close to 49 million according to AppMagic. So is the game in a way a disaster and sullied the reputation of Blizzard? Yeah, I'm gonna go with no because chances are the people who are outraged over this entire thing were probably already outraged with Activision and Blizzard over something else already. The type of audience that this controversy plays into probably is not an avid supporter of them already. And I mean, shit, it's pretty impressive in all honesty that even with the amount of controversy surrounding this game, if you look at the Google Play Store right now, the game is still hovering right around a four star rating with over 700,000 reviews. So I really don't think this is gonna do long-term damage to Activision Blizzard, but hey, who knows, man? Of course, it, it, but they're making money and that's all that matters. That is the purpose of releasing a mobile game after all, or shit, any game really. And people have been complaining about microtransactions for years, but yet companies are making money hand over fist. So do you think they're really going to care that gamers are angry? Fuck no, they're not, because the gamers that are angry are such a small, minute portion of the overall video game industry that they don't even equate to a drop in the bucket. Like, that's what people fail to realize is, yeah, you know, you may get a million view video shitting on FIFA every year. Oh my God, bro. But when 40 million people are buying that fucking game every single year, does it really matter? I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Probably fucking not, because chances are those people who are watching that video shitting on it probably weren't going to buy it in the first place. And when it comes to microtransactions, businesses operate on a very basic premise. They give people what they want to spend money on. So if people are willing to spend money on something, companies are going to provide that product or service to those people because it's a win-win situation. The people get what they want, the companies get what they want, which is money. So in the case of microtransactions, it has been demonstrated time and time again on a mass scale, and I'm not talking about random redditor number 42 in the comment section going i hate microtransactions with a passion you fucking bitch like i'm not talking about you i'm talking about the overall video game market the overall market has demonstrated time and time again that not only do they find value in microtransactions but they find enough value in microtransactions to the point that they are willing to pay more for microtransactions on scale than overall video game sales revenue so activision for example makes more more money in microtransactions than the actual sale of the game itself. That is all the proof you need at this point that microtransactions are 100% market driven. If people weren't buying them, companies wouldn't sell them. And no amount of Reddit outrage is going to change the fact that companies are putting microtransactions in their games until people stop buying them. And guess what? They're not going anywhere anytime soon. So at that point, you're left with a very easy solution, which, you know, back in the day I was kind of a fucking retard I'll admit and I was on this whole like EA microtransaction bad type beat but you know what the motherfucker in charge of EA said it best if you don't like it don't buy it and it really is just that simple and you know what if me saying this upsets you or makes me a shill bro then I only have one thing to say to you please touch some grass no 
They're not. Want more proof that microtransactions make money for developers and publishers even though the consumer hates them? Look how much money EA made for microtransactions. This comes from Statista.com. In the fiscal year 2022, March 2021 to Alright, is it just me or does it piss anyone else off that when Rich is reading something, he doesn't put the actual article on screen? I don't know if it's just me, man, but that shit drives me fucking insane. April 2022, gaming publisher Electronic Arts generated approximately 3.9 one billion U.S. dollars in revenues from extra content sales, with almost half of it being associated with the company's sports game, Ultimate Team Mode, as well as extra content for Apex Legends franchise. According to the company, extra content revenue has increased as players engage with games and services over longer periods of time and purchase additional content designed to provide value to players and extend gameplay. You know what they say, man, men lie, women lie, but numbers do not lie. And you can rage about whatever you want on fucking YouTube all day, every day for the rest of your life, but it's not going to change the simple fact that people are obviously financially supporting this shit. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of loot boxes with the exception of CSGO crates because I have a crippling addiction, but all jokes aside, man, it's just very simple. If you don't like those type of games or the type of games that force that type of stuff into them, don't buy the microtransactions or don't don't play that game. Like, it's really that easy. I guarantee you guys, I promise to you right now, your life is not going to significantly change if you pass up on the opportunity to play a video game. I'm just going to let you know that right now. And I already know somebody's going to be like, well, what if Ninja passed up the opportunity to play Fortnite? Okay, dude, go ahead and become the next fucking Ninja. Go ahead, man. I wish you all the best in your pursuits. So let me translate that for you. Microtransactions are making EA a lot of money and they are here to stay. They're making all developers and publishers a lot of money including everyone's favorite video game publisher themselves sony bet you guys didn't know that sony's most profitable game isn't even on fucking playstation it's a little game called fate grand order it makes them over a billion dollars a year and it's probably one of the worst examples of a gotcha game to ever fucking exist and yeah i might have been addicted to it for a couple years but you know what we're not going to talk about that shit my lineup is fucking stacked though why the hell are they going to listen to people complaining? Even though they, they, they could have worded it a little better, Pat and Ian, this is where they're right. Uh, we are a different audience than these games are going for. Yeah, I mean, I guess, but Pat and Ian's video, I had a lot of issues with aside from that. I don't really disagree with them that obviously this game was not made for like hardcore Diablo fans, but they were really wrong calling people entitled for being pissed off that this was the big announcement and an event you had to pay to fucking live stream. You know, it'd be a little bit different if this was like some random public event Blizzard held that anybody could tune into. Like you literally had to pay 60 bucks to watch this shit. You and I don't want to play games like this. I don't want to play games riddled with microtransactions, but the casual player was like, oh, this game is free and I could throw some money to, into it when I want to play more. They're doing it. And, and these companies are making a bunch of money. Now, will this last with Diablo Immortal? I mean, it's lasted for just about every other mobile game on the market. So my guess is yes. And especially once it hits China, I think this game's going to have pretty good legs long term. And even with that said, I'm probably never going to even bother downloading this piece of shit because I generally don't like mobile games. So I understand the game's not for me. That's why I'm not getting like pissed off at its mere existence. You know, I'm not quantum TV. I don't think every single game made has to literally be catered for me and me alone. Like Apex Legends and other free to play games. We'll have to wait and see. But those are numbers I never expected from Diablo Immortal. But apparently people don't care and it's all about the money. So gamers can rise up all we want to. That's right, guys. Gamers rise up. God, I'm glad people aren't afraid to make fun of those fucking losers. If they're making the dollars, that's all they care about. We could be as angry as we want, but even if it's angry money that Activision Blizzard's getting, it's still a dollar and a dollar is still green and they don't care where it comes from. So we could cry all we want to, as long as there's profit to be made, things like Diablo Immortal are gonna continue to be developed and made because there's profit there. It's that simple. 
and it really is just that simple. But before we wrap this up, I do just want to give a special shout out to all the motherfuckers on YouTube that literally have taken Raid Shadow Legends ads and sponsorships promoting a literal pay to win mobile game that are now calling out Diablo Immortal for being a pay to win mobile game. So I just want to say if any content creator out there is talking shit about Diablo Immortal and the fact that it's pay to win, acting like this is the worst thing to ever happen in the video game industry. If those motherfuckers at any point have ever done a sponsorship for Raid Shadow Legends, just know that the only issue they have with Diablo Immortal is that they didn't get fucking paid enough by Activision to talk about it. Plain and simple. Those motherfuckers are the biggest hypocrites on the planet, and you can probably find quite a few of them at this point because everybody and their fucking mother without fail is talking shit about this game, but I guarantee you a very large portion of those same people probably took a raid sponsorship at some point but you know what guys that is gonna do it for this video today if you did enjoy it make sure to drop a like on it i would greatly appreciate it and as always i do want to thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well you guys are the fucking best i really do appreciate it and i'm really glad to be back making some normal quality ass content for you guys so with that said i will catch you guys next time Thank you.